Hello friends, welcome to the next session. Here we are going to study what is non-deterministic finite automata. Let's get started. Now, non-deterministic finite automata is something which is going to be very non-deterministic in nature. That is, straight jumping onto the definition I say, it consists of finite set of states. One state is called as the start state and there can be zero or more final states. This point coincides as it is with the definition of DFS first point. What is different is my second point. I say over here, in NFA, from each state on each input symbol, there can be, there can be, 0, 1 or more transitions. That's how my NFA is going to be different from DFA. DFA used to say from each state on each input symbol there is exactly one transition. Here it says there can be no transitions or there can be one transition or there can be more than one transitions. So DFA permits only one. NFA permits 0, 1 or more than 1. That's how NFA is different. So example will make this thing more clear. But before that, let's understand the mathematical representation also. So moving to the next slide. I have the mathematical representation of DFA. And again, if you observe it closely, it says M is equal to Q summation del Q0 F and again it coincides with that of DFA and it has to because they are more or less the same machines with two different behaviors. So I say where Q is going to be nothing but the finite set of states which was same as that of DFA therefore I am not rewriting it. Then I have summation which is called as the input alphabet. The meaning of that, nomenclature of that, understanding of that remains the same. Next I have after this is del. Now del is something where my NFA stands out. So del over here is also called as the transition function. So I'll write it over here. Del is called as transition function. However, del over here is not represented as Q cross summation gives me Q. Instead, it is represented as Q cross summation is going to give me 2 raised to Q. Don't worry about that. I'll be explaining that in just a while. Going ahead, I have my Q0 which is called as the start state and q0 belongs to q same as that of dfa and last i have f which is called as the finite set of accepting or final states and i say f is a subset of q right so what you have not understood from this mathematical representation is this particular part Q cross summation gives me Q. Let me make that simple for you by taking an example. Before that, let us understand how do you read this particular thing. Here I say, given a state and an input symbol, what are the possible sets of output? What are the possible sets of outputs this is nothing but represented by my term 2 raised to q given a state and an input symbol what are the possible set of outputs going ahead jumping directly into the example i have i have my three states q a as we had before i have q b as we had before and I also have QC as we had before. QA is the start state and QC is the final state. Now, how did we define NFA? In NFA, from each state on each input symbol, there can be zero, one or more transitions. Let's understand that. 
I say QA on 0 is going to QA and QA on 1 is going to QB. Quite similar to DFA. Going ahead, I say QB on 0 goes to QB and QB on 0 also goes to QC. Here comes the non-deterministic nature of the NFA. Because on receiving an input 0, QB can jump to itself or QB can jump to some other state QC. And for QC, I say on 0, it goes over here and on 1, it is going over here. So, this particular diagram which I have in front of me is called as a non-deterministic finite automata. Going ahead, I say for my NFA, let us write the mathematical representation now. So, now I have M is equal to Q summation del Q0 F where here I have my Q again as QA. QB and QC respectively. Then I have my input alphabet as zeros and ones because they are present on the edges. I have my del which I'll describe it later. My start state Q0 over here is QA and my final state F over here is my QC. Moving on to the most important part, the transition table. So over here I say Q cross summation gives me 2 raised to Q. So plotting over here I have Q cross Q, input as 0, input as 1 over here. The start state is QA, then I have QB and final QC as my final state. And here the table is ready. Let's start filling in by copying the values from the transition diagram. So in the transition diagram, I see that QA on 0 goes to QA. Okay, let us write it down. Similarly, QA on 1 goes to QB. So writing that down to QB on 0. Now QB on 0 is going to QB as well as QB on 0 is going to QC. So over here for the first time it is going to QB and it is also going to QC. So this is for the first time in the syllabus that we are writing two states as the transition output for input on a single state. So QB on 0 goes to QB as well as QC. Similarly where does QB on 1 go let's check it in the transition diagram. QB on 1, I find that is not going anywhere. So this is also possible because that's what was the definition of NFA. From each state on each input symbol, there can be 0, 1 or more transitions. So we can see QB on 1 is giving me 0 transitions, whereas QB on 0 is giving me 2 transitions. Let's go for QC. QC on 0 is going to QB and QC on 1 is going to QA. Now, such a thing which is ready in front of me is called as a non-deterministic finite automata. So, up to now, these things are clear. Let us try to understand the examples too by trying to figure out how does the NFS solve it actually. Considering I have my QA and the input as 100. Let's try to understand how it is interpreted. So QA on receiving 1, QA on receiving 1, I am observing the transition table for the moment. So QA on 1 is going to QB, great enough, there is only single transition, so I really need not bother on. The next thing I have to check is QB on 0. If I observe QB on 0, I see there are total 2 transitions. Now here is the time to split my transitions. So I have QB on 0. QB on 0 can go to QB or QC. So I say QB on 0 if it goes to QB what is left with V is QB comma 0. However, if it takes QC state so it would be QC comma 0. 
Now it is the time to evaluate each one of this separately one by one, having noted that they are not dependent on each other. So going ahead, I have lastly left with me is QB on zero. What is QB on zero? QB on zero, I again see that there are total of two possibilities. So let's evaluate that. So QB on zero, I again have two transitions. So initially I say that is QB comma epsilon and here I will have QC comma epsilon. Now, if I observe this particular thing, is QC my final state? Yes, it is marked as star. So if the NFA, if the NFA happens to take this particular path, that is from here, if it travels left, following the dotted lines, we see that over here, it goes to QC. But the NFA also has a few other possibilities. So if the NFA happens to go into QB state, it will be rejecting it. Similarly, if you observe this part is left to be solved, QC on 0. What is QC on 0? I see that QC on 0 is nothing but QB. So now I have left with QB comma epsilon. Now this part is yet to be solved. This part is yet to be solved. And in fact, it cannot be solved. However, if NFA takes this particular thing or this particular dotted path as the input, it will give me the solution. Because of this nature, it is called as non-deterministic and hence the name NFA. Let's take one more example on it. So the example over here is number two, I say, QA comma 1 1 1. Now if I observe QA on receiving input symbol 1 is going to QB. Fair enough. QB comma 1 1. And QB on receiving a 1 is going to a state which is giving me no output. So there is nothing to predict over here. Therefore we directly say over here that this input will be rejected by the machine. So hence we conclude that in DFA from each state on each input symbol there is exactly one transition whereas in NFA from each state on each input symbol there can be zero, one or more transitions and that makes NFA really unpredictable. So in the following sessions we are going to study problems on DFA and NFA and later on procedures to convert regular expression to NFA, NFA to DFA and DFA further to minimize DFA. So for now we stop over here. Thank you very much.